Welcome to the first in a series of videos I'm producing, looking at various important concepts in biology and then explaining them. Today I'm going to be looking at what are stem cells. Stem cells are incredible because they have the potential to become many different types of cell. They also have the ability to divide without limit and replenish other cells as long as the organism is still alive. So first we need to look at what makes a stem cell different from a normal cell. There are two important characteristics that define this. First, that they are unspecialized cells, which are able to self-renew for use cell division, even if they have not replicated for a long time, meaning they can continually produce exact copies of themselves, and so they never really run out. And secondly, that under certain conditions, they can then be induced to become differentiated cells, meaning the genes that were all available have been either turned off or kept on, creating different specializations of a cell, and this allows the cell to have specific functions. For example, in the bone marrow, stem cells divide regularly to repair or replace damaged blood cells. But in other organs, such as the heart, they only divide at a few times, meaning the cells aren't really replenished very quickly or basically at all in the heart tissue. There are three broad categories of stem cells that I'm going to be talking about today. And that's totipotent stem cells, pluripotent stem cells, and multipotent stem cells. First, we can talk about where totipotent stem cells appear. And these stem cells have the ability to develop into a whole organism. So they're technically the most powerful of, of all stem cells I'm going to be talking about today. And they only tend to be found within the fertilized egg, in the daughter cell up to around day four following fertilization and before the blastocyst forms. That means they're only around for a few days and they're kind of very rare and they don't last very long, but they do have the ability to become any type of stem cell, any type of cell. Now, pluripotent stem cells are also a pretty important type of stem cell. And while they're not quite as powerful as totipotent stem cells, meaning they can't turn into any cell, they still have several or, or many different potential differentiations they could be become. And so they can basically become nearly every cell type, but they cannot form the placenta and supporting tissues needed to support a, f a fetus. And therefore they're unable to generate a new organism on their own, and so therefore aren't classified as totipotent stem cells. Now, it's possible to determine if an embryonic stem cell is pluripotent, uh, and that's by injecting human embryonic stem cells into immunocompromised mice. And then when you do this, these mice basically have no immune system. They lack T cells and B cells, and so don't reject the foreign tissue you've injected into them. You can then look for specific transcription factors that appear to function together to maintain pluripotency and allow the self renewal of embryonic stem cells. And these transcription factors which control the functioning of whether genes are expressed or, or not expressed in a cell, are OCT4, which is a transcription factor expressed by embryonic stem cells at the blastocyst stage, and it's only expressed by embryonic stem cells in the inner mass. Another transcription factor is SOX2. And this transcription factor is, forms a complex with OCT4, but does a similar job to the expression of OCT4. And then there's also NANOG, which is a transcription factor specifically expressed by pluripotent embryonic stem cells, and it's expressed slightly later than OCT4. So if you see these transcription factors, you can kind of work out if the cell is pluripotent or not, because it needs these to be able to help with the expression and self-renewal of this type of stem cell. You can also look at telomeres and telomerase to be able to tell if a cell is pluripotent or not, because embryonic stem cells express high levels of telomerase, which is an enzyme that helps maintain the protective function of the telomeres at the end of the chromosome. In fully adult stem cells, there is little to no telomerase activity in mature differentiated cells as the cell begins to age. If you're protecting these telomeres at the end of the cell, it means the cell is more likely to last longer and not be destroyed by your body uh, when the telomeres become too short, meaning the cell will have the ability to keep renewing without having to go through apoptosis or anything like that. And finally, the final type of stem cell is multipotent, and these are classified as adult stem cells. And they have the ability to self-renew, so they're classified as stem cells in that way, but uh, they do have a bit less self-renewal than embryonic stem cells or pluripotent stem cells, because they, by this point they have reduced telomerase levels, meaning that they slowly lose their telomeres, meaning eventually they will probably eventually be destroyed. But they still have the ability to differentiate into quite a few different types of cell, depending on, with specialized functions, depending on the type of multipotent adult stem cell they have become. Their primary function is to maintain the steady state activity of cell, allowing the cell to just keep producing itself, copies of itself, uh, helping reduce 
uh, replace cells that have been lost through injury or disease. Now, it's possible to describe the function of these adult stem cells because they quite, play quite an important part in how the fu our body functions. These tend to be, they tend to be, have self-preservation mechanisms. They tend to be long-lived, slow cycling, and obviously stay at G0, meaning they don't really replicate or go through the cell cycle. They also have enhanced DNA repair mechanisms, meaning they're less likely to go wrong and be destroyed by the body. And they also are less likely to be destroyed by the body when they get too old. So I hope this has been a kind of brief overview of what stem cells are, about the different types of stem cells, some examples of what adult stem cells are, and how you can recognize pluripotent stem cells. Stay tuned for more videos like this. Thank you.